The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting Wait. edition. Are we there? <laughs> well, had a little glitch there. Um, welcome to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your uh, humble and yet squeezably soft host. As always, we like to come to you at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So uh, 21, almost 22 points on the S&P cash at 2866. The Dow, 30, up 152. The NASDAQ up 68, 69. Russell, 2000, uh, up about 5. Of course, we've had a fairly decent pullback. Um, why we don't have the absolute number uh, for options for Delta Neutral, we're going to get those tomorrow. We had a huge move yesterday that pushed up. Uh, more than likely, uh, as far as the data now, uh, better than a 50% chance that we close above 2,900 come uh, the 16th of August. Um, so there's pretty good odds that we're going to close higher over the next week. Maybe not a lot higher. Maybe we have kind of a sideways uh, market to digest a lot of the news over the last week or two. Uh, but if you're thinking you're going to hear me saying the end is nigh, I don't think so. Um, the market was weak. It had, had light volume up there at the highs. Uh, but we really haven't seen the deterioration in earnings uh, that generally comes before any long time uh, or long term pullback in the market. Uh, again, options are actually rather bullish, at least for the next uh, you know, three, you know, let's call it eight trading days. We'll see if that goes in. It's a lot more predictive tomorrow. The numbers uh, could go up from a uh, the odds of a 2,900 or higher close uh, on the 16th uh, in the S&P cash uh, to 80% tomorrow. We'll see. But uh, fairly decent odds that we're probably not going to have anything lower than we saw uh, yesterday. So kind of an interesting play on it. Um, today is the end of fun buying uh, on probably 99% of the ETFs will say that they're going to be 100% uh, long at a certain date. There's no real penalty if they don't, uh, but uh, very few of them are not 100% invested by the time the sixth of a month rolls around. Uh, when we look at volume, of course, uh, we're actually starting to see, uh, you know, volume that we saw before, 4.2. 7 billion shares so far today. So actually fairly strong volume, uh, both down and up for August winter. Normally it's about half speed. Uh, and of course, uh, probably the biggest thing we want to look at is the dollar index. It's up 14 cents, uh, 97.45. When you look at it, it's just been kind of trending up since last night. Uh, in this price range, a little, a little bit. Uh, I'm going to say that skewed a little bit, just slightly higher uh, as we go through that. And of course, uh, for the big things, it's the, uh, uh, it's uh, do, 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 where is it at out here? We want to keep an eye on is the TLT. Uh, we're up in that 139 range, which is again kind of in the nosebleed section for these i would not be surprised to see yet another huge uh move maybe even to the downside in the tlt really looks like they pushed this maybe as hard as they could 
Uh, and I don't know if there's a great deal left out there. We'll talk about some of the big stocks. We'll talk about earnings uh, last night and this morning. Earnings after the bell tonight. We're going to have at least a couple uh, that could move the markets a little bit. We'll see how that goes. In the meantime, let's do a little history and we'll get into some charts. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. And, oh, we already did that. I need history. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. It is nothing but history, eh, kind of rhyming, not actually repeating. On this day in 1997 at Mac World Expo in Boston, Steve Jobs announces that Apple and Microsoft have signed a five-year alliance. Bill Gates famously makes his seemingly ominous Big Brother appearance on the large presentation screen during the announcement. Of course, at that time, uh, uh, Microsoft was starting to get the winds of antitrust. Uh, they thought the best thing to do was make sure that they weren't the last big software and PC manufacturer in the world. Uh, now, on this day, they actually gave Apple $150 million, uh, which wasn't that much at the time. Apple did have a billion dollars uh, in the bank. But what they couldn't do is develop any new products. Uh, over the years, that ended up being about uh, you know, closer to $2 billion. Uh, by the time that uh, 2005 rolled around. Uh, and you can say that without Microsoft, Apple would have never had all its big hits. It never would have been able to find the funding it needed uh, during the darkest times around the dot-com uh, blow-up. And, of course, Microsoft was uh, had to look everywhere all the time once 2000 rolled around and... As far as they were concerned, they couldn't really spend any money on new projects without having the government down on them. So they might as well have stuck that money uh, in uh, micro, uh, in uh, Apple and seen them grow. Uh, it was a uh, fairly good investment over time. Um, and depending on who you listen to, uh, that uh, $1.5 billion uh, through 2005 uh, was cashed out from uh, 2015 uh, through 2018 for some $30 billion. So uh, eh, you never know where that money is going to actually come from. Uh, Microsoft, I think, is pretty much out of all of its Apple shares. I don't think that they have uh, anything to speak about anymore. Uh, in the news today, uh, Amazon's uh, big uh, owner, Mr. Bezos and the CEO, uh, where's my chart here? Let's pop that up real quick. Um, has sold in the last couple of days, actually uh, August 1st and 2nd, $750 million worth of shares. Uh, not so much, though, that you would think that that's kind of an ominous sign. But remember, he is and will be selling shares for both him and his wife. And I would not be surprised at $750 million. A good hunk of that is not already headed to a soon-to-be or already ex-wife. I do not know. Uh, but uh, down on some volume, again, a lot of these stocks uh, with some very uh, big overhang of antitrust issues. I would not be surprised to see uh, a similar path uh, to Microsoft where these companies start investing in other companies to avoid antitrust issues. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Well, it looks like we've got the end of that fund buying money coming in. Again, that won't be there tomorrow, and we will go into options uh, delta neutral. That's where they try to uh, reduce the amount of movement in the portfolio to almost nothing uh, because that's where they can actually get their hands burnt fairly good with cheap options. So they uh, pretty much uh, make sure that they uh, hedge both sides of the bet. Uh, but uh, fairly nice movement out here, up 31 points now in the S&P cash. Um, someone corrected me uh, during the uh, break i'd seen the article where he'd sold 750 million shares i mean dollars already at amazon but uh yep there's a article out there showing uh that it's almost three billion dollars out there and of course many are saying that he's gonna use that extra money uh to uh fund blue origin his space shot uh but uh, at the same time uh, I went back and looked at those articles, and it does look like maybe that $750 million uh, is headed to the ex-wife, why he takes the rest of it to fund Blue Origin. So uh, I don't imagine these kind of things will come out here in a little bit. Um, uh, is there a horrible short interest in the market? No. It really looks like uh, the people in the market that were getting bearish uh, had bought a lot of downside protection in the VIX, but not so much uh, in individual stocks. And, and it may just be a new trend in the market to buy downside protection in the VIX and not uh, short individual stocks, uh, but try to stay long when you can. So we'll keep an eye on that and see how it works out. Uh, as we said, after the bell uh, tonight, uh, we've got some interesting earnings uh, coming out. One is Disney, uh, Wynn Resorts, uh, Planet Fitness, GW Pharmaceuticals, the only legal cannabis company. Match Group, Hertz Global Holdings, although I think we already had uh, Avis out already. We'll look at that. Papa John's Pizza. Uh, what else do we have? Eh, that's kind of 
it for the big names. Although now is what we're getting into are a lot of the small names. I mean, there's about 400 stocks reporting after the bell tonight. Uh, I would say 350 of them you've never heard of before. The other ones you may have heard of, but are maybe untradeable. Maybe 20 of them, 15 of them are something interesting. So small cap tonight. And tomorrow morning before the bell, we get CVS, Healthcare, CyberArk, Lumber Liquidators, a handful of other ones, Wendy's International. Is that right? Am I on the wrong day? Yeah, that'd be seventh. Um, and a handful of others. So we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, earnings uh, this morning and after the bell last night. Uh, allergen, um, not much movement on this one. Yeah, I looked at the reports earlier this morning. I can't remember anything about it, so it doesn't seem that interesting. Uh, just kind of coming back here to where the support has been at 160 bucks. Uh, car, which is, of course is Avis Rent-A-Car, um, spiked down lower in the day, uh, not that horribly, $31.92, uh, kind of back to where it was the day before earnings, no big deal. The giant loser of all time uh, is uh, Dean's Food, uh, not a big cap stock by any stretch of the imagination, but a huge downside move uh, in the actual company off 29% as we speak, 87 cents. I, I couldn't remember that this company uh, being in such death throes from previous times, but I, I mean, this was a $21 and 65 cents stock uh, two years ago, a year and a half, yeah, two and a half years ago. So it's been on a one way trip since January 4th, 2017, where this thing hit its high at $21 and 65 cents, uh, done nothing but sell off since then. Energizer Holdings, uh, those battery folk, come on, give, give, come on. I know you can do it. Huh? Nothing there. Let's redo this here and see. Okay. Got a good quote here. Uh, another one that uh, is take, taking it with a uh, beating with the ugly stick today. Uh, down uh, to the low of $32.81. Actually blew through just about everything uh, back to, where is this gap here? To, to, to February 3rd of 2016. Everybody's in a losing position pretty much since back then. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, Buffett was big in this. He may still be. Maybe I'll get a chance to check during the break. But this may be one of his big losers. I can't remember if he's already gotten out. Maybe somebody in the den remembers. Uh, but uh, I remember him getting into this big time. Maybe this is why it's fallen like a souffle in a 1970s sitcom. If you ever watched the Brady Bunch, that was it. Uh, Ellen was always, was it Ellen? Was always uh, cooking something and the kids were always uh, slamming the doors and the souffle would fall. Well, back to the giant gap higher and you're gonna get that retest here probably fairly quick. Um, maybe rechargeable batteries are just kind of doing away with uh, selling a lot of D and C and A cells anymore. Uh, but And maybe just LED lights mean that you don't need to use so many batteries. I don't know. But it certainly looks like there is a trend. Uh, oh, is it uh, Duracell is what uh, Buffett has? Huh. Like I said, I'll have to check on that. I kind of vaguely rem uh, remind, uh, remember that he was in all those. We'll find that out during the break. International flavors, another uh, death throws. Buffett equals to ourselves. So, okay. Uh, to, to, to December 24th, 122.87 in international flavors and fragrances. Uh, blew through that today. And uh, this is quite the haircut. Uh, you're back to this gap that goes back to March 21st. Uh, this does, I would have said, looks like it's in a giant trading range, 
except for the monster volume today that is blowing through everything. Let's see. Um, looks like this would come back to 107.54, which is the January 6, 2017 low. Okay. And what else? Uh, to, to Marriott International, uh, again, uh, down just a little bit, uh, but it was in a downtrend already. Uh, headed back to the gap of June 4th, then at 1.8 million shares, you already have 2.85 million shares, uh, but uh, didn't hold the low, so it's a little bit better. Mosaic Company, uh, those potash companies and fertilizer companies, um, back to the May 29th low with a huge amount of volume. This looks like it may hold that low. We'll be back after this. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter. And if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And I did go back and look at it. All right, their cell is Buffett. I couldn't remember which one. Um, they're blaming the, 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 uh, that the weather hasn't been that bad that there haven't been enough tornadoes and uh, hurricanes to drive battery sales. And a little bit of what I said, which is, you know, with uh, rechargeable batteries, people just aren't buying that much anymore. In fact, I bought a new flashlight, and it's rechargeable. 
with a USB connector on the back of it. It's pretty much a throwaway. I don't think I can replace the battery in it. But uh, I, I, if I went to a long, drawn-out thing, but, you know, if it lasts four or five years, I'm probably going to be money ahead on the rechargeable for not having to put a bunch of double A's in it or something. So I could see that that would change something. Uh, Shake Shack out after the bell last night. Fairly nice uh, pop um, back into this gap that goes back uh, pretty much uh, into the IPO time frame. Where is it at here? Come on. There we go. Um, actually not. $70 June 20th, or July 20th, 2018, $70.12. Uh, but a huge spike, and uh, I don't know. I We don't have one anywhere that I see, but I do tend to watch a lot of TV shows, and these guys have gotten a lot of free press, especially for TV uh, TV shows filmed in and around Hollywood and, and L.A., and, uh, you know, they, a lot of times you sell the sizzle, not the steak. In this case, it's the overpriced hamburger, and uh, deep some kind of fries with cheese or something on it. Maybe someone will call in and tell me that's been to a Shake Shack why this thing is worth this. Because I don't know. Maybe if I went there, it would change. But uh, I'm unaware. Uh, another uh, stock out, Santa Fe, uh, with information about uh, their uh, new drug, but it really didn't do anything today. Uh, take two, again, uh, this was the one I talked about yesterday. It could have a huge uh, spring back. It was down yesterday on everybody blaming it that its games were uh, uh, making people go out and shoot people. I play a couple of their games, and so far I've only shot a few. Just kidding, folks. Um, no, video games probably don't make people shoot anybody. They were probably nuts already. Uh, but certainly these games continue to do well. Nice spike to 128.50 today. It's up. It's uptrend is intact. A short time out there for me to sneeze. Um, and you're off to new highs. Um, let's look a little bit farther. Uh, when you uh, looking for all-time highs, this looks like it's well on its way to the October 1st, 2018 high. That's 139.91. I think this pop right here is everything you needed to see this go up. Let's turn this down a little bit and see if I can get something there. A um, little lighter energy. Uh, so far, but not that bad. Uh, I think you've got a high probability of testing 139.91. Uh, the question is, if we get into that around September, they come out with a new title that shows that they're going to drop another two or three billion dollars in sales, um, and that'd be it. Now, as far as a value proposition, um, I find it kind of interesting some of the data. I'm not a big player. I know people play video games all the time, but I've had a game for like two years and it keeps track of how many hours you actually play on it. And I remember I paid about 50 bucks for the game. It dried up my alley. I love playing it. Uh, and it told me that I've played it for over 200 hours now. And you got to think if you pay 50 bucks, for a game, get to play it for 200 hours. You pay, what, 12 bucks for a movie, get to watch it for two and a half. Uh, plus, these are more interactive. Uh, you can even buy additional expansion packs and play it longer. I can kind of understand, especially if the value proposition, but not only that, um, just, you know, maybe the change in the way that movies have been put out actually probably helps video game companies 
Uh, there's a handful of tent pole movies in the summer. And once those are over, you generally get the release of the big tent pole games come the fall and in climate weather. So it probably works out fairly well that there are fewer bigger movies and uh, very few smaller movies anymore. They either go to Netflix or Amazon or some of the other streaming services. And I can imagine with Disney coming on, in fact, let's take a look at Disney uh, pre-earnings tonight. We'll refuse to entry upon the flight. Uh, why is that? TSA officer, you see polar, refuse to entry upon the flight. Oh, I've only shot a few. Okay, I get it. Um, Walt Disney Company back down into this gap. Uh, ta -ta. Okay, you gapped up on the 13th of June. You did so on 18 million shares. I think that was earnings too. No, it wasn't earnings. Something else. And you're back into it with 10.7 million shares yesterday. So not a bad test of that gap area going into earnings. Of course, uh, they're going to be pushing their streaming service this fall. Um, they've got a lot of titles, and it may be a great way to monetize some of that older stuff that they've had out there for a while. But uh, I don't know exactly how many people. I guess if you have kids, probably an instant buy, isn't it? Uh, I don't, you know, Amazon, you get. Amazon Prime with your with your uh, Amazon subscription already, so it's not a thing. I, you know, the way that this is probably stacking up is that you'd keep Amazon Prime Video, and if you had Netflix, you might, you know, if you're going to cannibalize something, I think Walt Disney would be more than likely to cannibalize Netflix more uh, than Amazon Prime. Uh, in XLF, right? Net in FLX, excuse me. I guess I'm glad that I pretty much fly private everywhere <laughs> since I don't go that far. Uh, do, do, what do you got? Okay, Netflix, you did test the low blowout after earnings we'll talk more about this when we come back actually tested with what routine yeah not bad about half the volume yesterday we'll be back in a minute If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in a Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. What should you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. 
Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. On Netflix, 17.7 uh, million shares on the 22nd of July. Uh, tested that with just 8.6, 8.7 8 million shares yesterday. So actually not as bad as I thought. Maybe that changes this fall. I think you'd probably get back up at a 340, 345. And that would be, I don't think you could short the stock here. Uh, but you got up uh, 345, 350 with light volume. That's where you might want to take the next look at it. Um, again, I don't think I'd want to be. Netflix seems to be a little bit odd man out um, with new streaming competition. Um, and, of course, lost subscribers already. Uh, but I think that's got to do with many other factors. Uh, UTX, United Technologies, nice reversal out here today almost railroad tracks if this continues on uh, either call called a tweezer bottom uh, or railroad track bottom um, you need a little bit higher close out on utx but doesn't look that bad got a question to look at boeing um they've finally gotten back down to the 330 area what is it 326.96 was yesterday's low um, volume was not all that exciting. It wasn't kind of blowout volume that you might think. This goes back uh, to a smaller gap on the 8th of January of this year. So you've got a fairly decent um, time frame. You've got four gaps down below all the way to 282. Uh, at this point, the question is whether or not they can get the planes back in the air and why I understand the problem. Um, I'm not exactly sure what it takes to fix it uh, to pass the FAA scrutiny uh, because it's a little bit of software and uh, a bit of hardware and maybe even retrofitting some of the planes uh, with new angle of attack indicators. Uh, but maybe this is the end to outsourcing software uh, to uh, Far East, uh, 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 Asia, um, software uh, uh, vendors, instead of doing it here in the United States. Uh, this may be one of the most expensive software blunders uh, and hardware blunders, because it's not a single issue of just software, uh, but a bit of hardware, too, uh, in which one piece of hardware can fail, and that ripples into the software. It continues to have a fail. So there were two failure modes on the same failure. Uh, and I think that tells you everything you need to know. But um, there's people on YouTube that have been tearing apart some of the older angle of attack indicators. And they're not that sophisticated. But, of course, to this point, 
they were kind of like an auxiliary uh, indicator for pilots. Most didn't spend that much time looking at them because they're very hard to read uh, now that they're used uh, as an integral part of the software to fly the plane. Uh, maybe a variety of reasons this all ended up being the fail well. Okay, what else do we have? Oh, wanted to look at uh, a handful of other stocks. Uh, we looked at Boeing. Um, they brought up IBM. Uh, no surprise that this thing isn't bouncing. Uh, it does have fairly decent good support at this $140 range. Still no word about their quantum computer effort. That would be the product that is going to save them. Uh, what they're doing now and uh, their acquisition of Red Hat uh, might let them go sideways for a while. I just don't see uh, the massive amount of business flowing to IBM because of Red Hat. There's probably a decent buy um, for them and certainly a, a good buyout for Red Hat. Uh, but uh, yeah, what can you say? <laughs> Let's go back here and look at a few other ones. Got a question coming in about the SMHs. Um, we certainly, you know, got right back to the gap up that goes to June 26. That had 7.3 million shares. You did get into it with about 9 million shares. You got a nice pop and a little bit uh, higher today. I suspect that that is going to continue. Uh, if you were looking to be bearish, I would certainly now wait. Oh, let's look at uh, retracement here. 115.48 is the 50% retracement on the SMHs. I think we could easily get to that 115.48, maybe even up to the 117.39, and still remain uh, bearish in the SMHs. I am not particularly bearish. But if you are thinking about pulling the trigger, I think we've seen the uh, train that leave the station on that. And now you're way looking for a rather large bounce to reshort if you're feeling that way. Uh, if we get into September, I suspect there are a few things, especially uh, around memory, that are going to continue to do well throughout the fall, uh, trade deal or not. I think people are going to go on a couple of weeks, maybe a month. Not much is going to actually change, and uh, people are going to do it. Question about what we talked about yesterday in the YNN, uh, and if there's anything else out here. I mean, you're up a little bit. Um, there's too many. There are a lot of voices out here saying that there is a systemic risk in the Chinese market. Um, I have no way to tell. I'm not sure anybody else does either. Uh, that's a black box of uh, probably bad loans and uh, Enron-like deals in all of China. And the only question is, when does it blow up? Uh, but I think as an outsider, we have a hard problem seeing in. But of course, uh, they continue to have egg on their face from the uh, Hong Kong issues. So don't see much changing there. Uh, IBB, another question coming in on that one. It's up a buck. Um, you didn't really, I mean, you got back to the gap up on June 4th at 2.5 million shares. Got into 2.9 million shares yesterday. You're up on 1.6 million shares. I still suspect that when this uh, turns, uh, this may be the biggest uh, trade for a sector in a long term. But it may take all the way through the elections uh, before that resolves itself. So you may have another year sitting uh, on the sidelines. Um, what else do we have? I had one that I was looking at fairly hard yesterday. Uh, it, it did not pan out. I didn't buy it either. Uh, and that was Docu. Uh, I like the company. A little more problematic about that. The only nice thing today is they're down on lighter volume. Uh, but you are on a pullback basis from the $35.06 low on November 
20th of 2018 up to the March 15th high in 2019. Uh, you're back down to the uh, that six one, um, uh, yeah, the six one eight at forty four forty four. So, kind of close. Anyway, we'll be back in a bit. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And yes, Tom O'Brien is back today. And uh, he'll be here for the three to five hour of course, uh, for those earnings, check in at 4 o'clock and uh, find out what Disney and the rest that we talked about at the beginning of the show are doing after hours. Uh, what else is happening here? Uh, well, we're up 30, let's call it 32 points on the S&P cash uh, volume, 5.3 eh, billion shares, which is pretty good. Nothing compared to the slaughter on the way back down. Um, I just don't see a great deal out here that tells me to run for cover. I do have a couple of long positions. <coughs> um, but other than that, uh, looking to pick things up on the cheap on any pullback. I've got one other that I got my eye on before the end of the day, so we'll take a look at that. Um, but uh, I think you can be uh, prudent and cautious and patient in buying uh, this pullback. We're probably going to see a little bit of downside tomorrow. Uh, that's for going delta neutral 
into options for the expiration on the 16th. Uh, by the end of the day, though, I suspect we're probably back up and without yet another huge headline news, probably could drift up and maybe uh, up all the way into that to August 16th expiration. Um, but it seems like maybe we've kind of uh, eh, just had a little bit too much too fast and burnt out a lot of the bearishness, at least in the short term. We'll see how the next week goes. But uh, in the short term, I'm kind of bullish. Uh, anything else happening out here? I think that's it. We looked at the dollar, everything else. Kind of quiet, probably will be until that next big headline. In the meantime, sell when you can, not when you have to. And we'll see you here tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time. <laughs>